Hey everybody, this is Adam Brown of Liberation Hotels from Kai. We've got two special guests. We've got Mr. Red Chambers and I didn't catch your name. Sheila pretty young. Sheila, all right. So, okay, you guys will see the Facebook post. You'll see my little intro that I do for these guys at the beginning of this video. Uh, why don't you guys introduce yourselves a little bit? Tell us kind of your political history, what your background is, uh, and then we'll go from there. Go first. Uh, my name is Sheila Walshman and I'm very pro-gun. I believe in the Second Amendment for everyone to be able to protect themselves no matter where they are. Um, of course, our intention was not to violate any sort of law or ordinance. Um, at the moment, we did not know of the ordinance, but hindsight, we would have abided by that. But my thoughts still stand on the point of open or concealed carry for any citizen to protect themselves. I mean, uh, went through a lot of process and a lot of advice. Um, Kenny Parks was a big deal, a big part of helping me out. Um, he went through and talked to state representatives. He talked to very a lot of constitutional lawyers, and uh, we're having a big open carry picnic. And uh, hopefully, we can raise a lot of the money that we've had to spend during this to uh, protect our rights. Um, awesome. Okay. Well, I'm Red Chambers. Uh, I believe in the Second Amendment. Guns put more than just protection for my family. It's, it's food on our table. I'm a country boy. Uh, I've got many guns. I help kids with them. Uh, single single women. Angie. Uh, we've had a ton of support. We appreciate it. Uh, it's, it's been a long process. As far as the political affiliation, I wouldn't say I'm Republican or Democrat. I want the best candidate for our country. All right. I, honestly, it's just like the saying goes, why do you need a fire chief sure if you have the fire department? Well, why do you need a gun if you have the police department? Because danger can happen at any time, and by the time that those people are there to help you, you may not be able to help yourself unless you're well equipped to do so. And that's my firm belief. And the number one supporter of that is Aaron Penberthy. He does everything for gun rights. He helps people be prepared <coughs> in case something happens. He helps people... Uh, know their rights. He helps them understand the laws that come with owning a gun, and he's always there to help you if you need help. And he's a great supporter. And I just want to say thank you to him specifically. Absolutely. Now, it's kind of an interesting story how I got to even get to know about you, Mr. Chambers, because I was just going through Facebook on my phone uh, during my uh, while I was kind of getting ready to do my overnight shift last night at, at the hotel I work at, and I was like, oh shit. This dude's being drugged through the ringer. I need to reach out to him. Let's uh, let's get his story told. Literally yesterday. So by the time this goes up, it'll be a week and two days. Uh, this will go up next week, Wednesday. Uh, so this just goes to show the power of the internet. You'll see one story from somebody that happens to be in your region. I happen to follow the CMO 10 page, and you posted there, and I was like, let's jump on this shit. So let's. Uh, <laughs> I'm really excited for that. So, you know, thank you for keeping everybody posted on that. I know you've got a lot of friends and family in, in with all the CMO 10 stuff and all the other, you know, similar groups in the area. Um, it's kind of odd to say thank you for going through your problems, but, you know, it, it's a good educational thing for the whole community, I think, and, and the world over, I think. So, let's let's break down what happened. What's the story? Start from the beginning. Uh, every year we do the annual gun show at Cape and Pop and Bluff. We come up. Uh, a large group of us spent a couple hours going through the gun show, looking at the guns, looking for parts, just standard visiting Cape to spend some money and do some quality family time. Uh, been in there two or three hours, decided to go to the mall. The women wanted to go do some shopping and then we were going to go grab a bite to eat. Went into the mall, the mall is not posted, it's being a gun free zone. That was our first reaction was, yeah. let's look in the door, see if there's, you know, no weapons allowed. And there wasn't, so, you know, not thinking anything of it, we went ahead and went shopping. We've been in the mall 45 minutes to an hour, shopping store to store. Talking with sales associates, um, you know, buying different items. Just being in the mall uh, browsing. Honestly, we didn't even get any weird looks from kids. Kids weren't even surprised, I mean, and I would have felt bad, you know. But the major part that happened, which caused the giant scene, was police coming in with the guns drawn and there's kids in the store and and those kids were petrified. Then you've got people walking around wondering what's going on and they're terrified now too because they see police with guns open. And, you know, 
with that being said, we were very compliant. We did what they asked us to do, and we, we were told that it was a city ordinance not to open carry, and, you know, even having a concealed carry permit, I would rather open carry any day. That way, people well, who want to hurt other people know, hey, there's someone there that can protect them. America needs to know that not only bad guys have guns, good guys have guns too. You know, most people are afraid of guns because they have no knowledge or information of it. You know, if you're going to be scared of something, look at it. Educate yourself. Why are you scared? You know, all my whole life, military background, I've grown up hunting. I've, I've got, I got a ton of guns. Uh, <laughs> I collect old military relics. Uh, I'm a history buff. My kids, my grandkids have guns. I, I start them out with a BB gun, teach them proper gun safety. You know, they go hunting with us during deer season, during rabbit squirrel season. They carry their BB gun for the first two years. By the time they actually get to take a gun and go to the woods, they're, they've been educated. And, and that's huge for a lot of people because they've never been educated. Right. Of course, was getting arrested and getting our mug shots taken, and that was a great thing to see on the internet. And uh, <laughs> got a lot of negative comments and a lot of supportive comments from that. But you know, there's a reason why the Second Amendment is there. It's it's for the right to bear arms, and honestly, it's a protection of your home, your person, and your property. And honestly, we're protecting our our person and our property. That's what we were there for. We weren't there to make a big stir. We weren't there to make a political statement. And now that it's blip, you know, out in public, well, now it's time to make our statement. Not a blind. We were there shopping. Right and. You know, I, I did some digging, and now granted, I, I spent all of 30 to 45 minutes digging through all the city ordinances and city codes, which when you figure out that between federal, state, and local laws, you got books that are going to stack up this tall, that align this whole sidewalk, it's impossible for everybody to know what every law is. I couldn't there? find it. I couldn't find the damn ordinance. Does it actually exist? What's the actual ordinance? Do you guys happen to know the number offhand? Or? Uh, don't have the number offhand. We did find it on Google, you know, doing okay. a little bit of it's wrote research. Down on our tickets. Yeah, it's oh. wrote on our tickets. <laughs> but, uh... You know, the whole situation could have actually been handled different when they approached us in the mall. I mean, seven cops come in with guns drawn, screaming and yelling, pushing people around. Uh, they could have come up and maybe surrounded us and said, hey, let me take you outside and discuss this. There was no reason to be treated the way we were. Right. It seems like it was more of a guilty until proven innocence. No, yes. I mean, obviously you were you were in there with, you had a firearm in there. There's no two ways about that. You guys know that. You guys admit to that openly, and that's great. I fucking love that, that you guys <laughs> walked in with guns. If I were, you know, anywhere, and I saw somebody open carrying, or I knew somebody had a concealed carry on them, because I kind of know where to look. Yeah. Not that I'm a creeper and look like for that kind of stuff, <laughs> but... Uh, it makes me feel safe because I don't have my CCW yet and I'm going to be getting it at some point when I've got the time to go and take the classes and stuff like that. But I'd rather have, you know, two people like you happening to be wandering around in the same store as me just in case the shit hits the fan. Or God forbid, you know, a cop comes in and starts trying to blow up the joint like we see exactly. all across it's the country. It's not just citizens, it's everybody, no matter right. their profession. You know, just to add something, uh, we don't openly carry or conceal carry just because, you know, it's, it's cool. That, right. That's who we are. That's that's right. the lifestyle we live. The area we're from. Everybody does it. Right. Uh, you go down to the shooter shack and pop up where I buy a lot of my guns and ammo. And if you tell the owner Alan Shackleford, yeah, Red got arrested for open carry, and he's gonna look at you and say, well, Red's always carried. You know, that's that's who we are. Right. So after you guys got arrested, well, what, what was the environment like when they came in? You know, what, what was your reactions? Was, what were they yelling and screaming? What, what was, was the atmosphere? It was a hostile environment. I mean, we're literally looking at shoes on the shelves, and next thing you know, I turn around and police, literally. Guns drawn. And it's embarrassing, holding their gun sideways with a flashlight. <laughs> um, get out, get out, everyone get out, pushing people out the door. And then they tell me until they see the gun on my hip, and they're like, grab you by, you know, your neck slash shoulder and shove you against the shelves. the shelves, the shoe racks, and put your hands behind your head, just completely treat us like criminals, and we're, you know, a couple of us are crying, we had a, what, seven-year-old with us who was made to stay in that general vicinity and watch all this, and that poor kid's traumatized from it, now he thinks, like, are the cops good or bad? 
And that was the biggest, you know, heartbreak and all that was the fact that there was a kid involved and they couldn't even tell the mother of the kid who was not caring at all, go ahead and step outside, we'll have a police officer talk to you there. Get your son out of the environment. No, it wasn't an option. Right, and one thing that, that always strikes me as odd whenever we see these kind of ridiculous situations, you know, whether a cop guns somebody down or they go in guns drawn in a place for two peaceful people, you know, these are people supposedly trained in de-escalation tactics and negotiation and stuff like that. Where was that negotiation? I don't think it happened. It wasn't a de-escalation. It was more of an escalation. It wasn't, you know, we pled guilty to a peace disturbance, but in, in all reality, we could have made some people uncomfortable, but if mall security would have kindly asked us, hey, that's not allowed in our store, in our mall, please leave, we would have, gladly. If the police would have told us that, we would have left, gladly, you right. know? And it all comes down to city ordinance comes from Missouri Constitution, which Missouri Constitution violates the United States Constitution. We have the right to carry those weapons, and, you know, it keeps dwindling down, and those rights are slowly, you know, more restricted, well, where does the line stop? Where, where, when do you step over that line? And I felt like it was stepped over at that day. Yeah. It, it was, we were treated almost like we were in a police state at that, at that particular yes. moment. Yeah, it's, it's no surprise, especially with the hyper-militarization hyper of the police nowadays. I mean, didn't KPD just got a military vehicle given to them a couple of months ago, I think it was. Why do they need that? Why do they need this big old armored vehicle Not for, for people like us. <laughs> Cape Girardeau, Missouri? I mean, sure, we've seen an uptick in crime, which I've got a theory on that. Uh, you know, with the SEMO Drug Task Force going around and stirring up the criminals. Uh, you know, yeah, there was crime back before this task force happened, but they're stirring up those guys, making them run, putting pressure on them. And then we see an uptick in crime this year. No freaking surprise, but that's a conversation for another day, I guess. People who are going to hurt <laughs> others are not going to probably be legally have a gun anyway. No and the fact that you're wanting to take guns away from people who want to legally carry them is absurd to me because the police aren't going to be there when, when shit hits the fan. Right. We are. I don't disagree with some of the gun-free zones. There's no reason to have a gun in the hospital, places like that. I understand that. They have their and, own security. Right, and we respect those rights. You know? Had the mall been properly legally posted, which it's not legally posted, yeah, they have wording on their little sign that says no weapons allowed. But state law says it's got to be eight and a half by eleven with minimum one inch lettering. It's clearly not. expressed on the front door of the entrance. Right, and yeah, I, I go in that mall just about every single month, uh, and I've seen no such postings anywhere. And you know, I mean, being that I support property rights, if say I I don't want you coming onto my property with a weapon, that's fine. You either abide by that or I get you removed from my property. And I don't think you guys would disagree with that, am I no, right? No, it's we completely were, fair. We were exactly. never asked. To right. leave. We were never notified of nothing. We were shopping, and the next minute we've got guns going on us being shut down. Mall security right. were the ones that called the cops before they even approached us about the situation. And apparently, a few citizens did too, which I apologize for them to making them uncomfortable. But if more people were apt to do this, it would become a norm, and therefore right. people wouldn't be scared. And it's as simple as that. You know, I could understand if it had happened and we'd only been in there five or ten minutes and it happened that fast, or typical amount of response time, say 15 or 20, no farther from the police station than the mall is. But the fact that we were in there 45 minutes to an hour, we've been in multiple shops. By that time, if we were gonna do anything, we'd have been acting suspicious, sketchy. I mean, our guns were in broadside. I had a shoulder holster on with a 1911 sticking right out in, in plain sight. You know, making no attempts to hide it. I mean, yeah. if we were gonna do something, it had already been done. And yeah, no store okay. associate bothered to tell us either. They talked to us, tried to sell us stuff. I mean, if that's the way it's going to be, then why not train your associates to say, hey, that's not allowed? No one right. did, and they obviously weren't scared enough to not approach us. They approached us, and they talked to us, and we had conversations, and we bought items. And not one person came to us saying that they felt uncomfortable, or mall security never approached us saying, leave. And I felt like we were violated in that aspect because we were never given the chance to abide by that city ordinance that's there, whether it, I think it's constitutional or not. Well, originally they weren't even sure what the charges were. <laughs> they talked about charging us with trespassing. They didn't have a clue. I mean, so if it's a city ordinance, they should be trained on how to charge you, what to charge you with. They didn't even know what kind of guns we had. 
Well, and I find typically the cops don't even the law, know the laws they're supposed to enforce. And exactly. you know, like I mentioned before, do we really expect somebody who happens to live in the area to go and before they do anything, let's stop, let's read this book that's got you know a stack this big of, of ordinances. No one's gonna do that. I mean, obviously we know don't rape, don't murder, don't steal. That shit is kind of just obvious. Yeah. But walking around with a weapon, it's kind of I ridiculous. Mean, I have my CCW and in that class, granted, I don't even think that it's a long enough class to teach people rights and stuff, but they tell you, look into each state that you're going to, but for the most part, it's, you go to, and travel to a different state, you keep it in your glove box, or you're able to open carry. You know, you talk about city ordinances, well, I live in one city, another city's five miles from me, the other city's 20, so am I supposed to look around at every single city that's in Missouri? No, it should be a... A Missouri-wide thing, and we're an open carry state. So why, yeah. why the hell shouldn't we open carry, just in case we need to protect someone? Well, exactly. let me ask you a question. You live in Cape, yes, sir. Okay, Cape is a gun-free zone in the city limits. How many shootings have you had in Cape in the last four months? Too many. Okay, so <laughs> how well is this law really working? Yeah, because the law-abiding citizens are the ones being arrested, where your common criminals that are running around shooting people, just shooting at random, they're still out running around. Exactly, and that, that just goes to show that obviously the, the justice system has no priorities that are any kind of sane. Uh, I mean, I've, you know, me being a, what's called a Rothbardian libertarian, meaning that I support a completely free and unhampered market, uh, which means no state, no government whatsoever, because obviously we see government services tend to be blown out of proportion, no accountability. But that and, level of authority yeah. <laughs> kind of goes. It never works. It never works. And they take it to the extreme. Yeah, and, and it doesn't let us be a free people like our forefathers were supposed, you to be, supposed to make it. Right. I mean, they, we were set on the foundation of that constitution for a reason. Right. You know, those are the ones that are supposed <laughs> to not be altered. And slowly over time, not just that one, but, you know, Every, a lot of the constitutional amendments are slowly being taken and refined and refined and refined and our rights are slowly being taken away and the majority of we the people are setting back and saying, oh, well, it's not going to happen to me. I don't carry a gun. I'm not concerned. Well, yeah. what if someone comes into your house and shoots you and your neighbor has a gun and they come to save you, but it's too late because you didn't have one and you got shot or your family. Kick my door and see what exactly. <laughs> <laughs> right, spot on. Now let's kind of fast forward to you know all the stuff with the court case. How long has this this court battle been going on? What's uh, been? You don't have to disclose necessarily amounts of money, stuff like that. I know that might be a little more private. All, but between the three of us, we've got several thousand dollars a piece. Uh, it's been going on since the second week of March. I believe the weekend of March 11th when the gun show was here in town that Saturday. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, we could have fought it, but it would have cost more than several thousand dollars a piece to keep fighting that, which we would have loved to do. Because the whole point of this is to change the Missouri Constitution to abide by the United States Constitution. My biggest question I still keep going back to is how can a city ordinance override a state law? Right, it, that makes no sense to me. Now, you know, of course, being with my uh, anarchist ties, I don't think any of the, those laws really mean a damn thing. But, you know, the. We got the federal law, which is supposedly, you know, the big greatest All thing you can't go against. And then the state law is going to be the next best thing. So I can kind of understand, you know, some city laws, you know, you can't buy liquor after this time period, which is dumb. You can't go and <laughs> do this on Sundays or, you know, do this backflip with a, with a hula hoop while you're jumping through fire with, you know, a baby on your hip or something like that. I get that kind of stuff. But uh, something that is so fundamental, especially in the Midwest. I mean, yes, we're in a kind of a college town, which makes it tend to be more liberalized, but we're in the middle of freaking America, right near Texas. How is this not a thing to open carry? You just pointed out we're in a college town. Okay, Missouri state law also says no guns on a college campus. So how can a city that's a gun-free zone have a gun show in the city limits that's a gun-free zone are also on caring. a college campus? <laughs> exactly, and then you've got the the cape, well, the, the security force that happens to run around the university, they have guns. Now, you know, granted, I've got no issue with them carrying firearms. If they absolutely needed to put down a threat, more power to them. I mean, I hope that would never have to happen. And I, 
I pray that it never has to happen. Just Obviously, like we all do. Shootings, the teachers should be armed and capable to protect those innocent kids or teenagers right. or whoever it may be. And they can't even do that, even though us as parents want our kids to be protected at all times. Are we supposed to homeschool them? That way they can be protected and not be shot at a school? No, it would be a safer place if those teachers had that right to put down the harm that's going to come to these kids. And it should be like that everywhere. Well, there was an interesting quote by, uh, I think it's Senator Representative, I forget what the hell she is, uh, Ms. Ms. Feinstein up in, up in the, the government said something along the lines of, uh, if, if a shooter walks into a place that they know nobody has guns, they're going to put down the gun and realize that they're in the wrong. You know, or something to that effect. I'm paraphrasing horribly. Yeah, but man doesn't know where to ask yeah. for. <laughs> you know. uh, honestly, the gun-free zones, are, I mean, even, even the military uh, base that, or whatever it was that had a shooter go rampage. Well, no one could stop them because they didn't have guns. You're the military. Where are your guns? <laughs> Exactly. exactly. What are you supposed to do? Well, you're a gun-free zone. Thank you, government, for allowing all those people to die because they couldn't simply carry a gun. Well, and that's where most of your shootings happen. Gun-free zones. Yeah. Malls, schools, places you can't have guns. All body citizens don't have them. Right. Where is all your criminal activity? Exactly. Now, so so we just wrapped up. So what it what it was the actual final outcome? What happened? Uh, obviously, we got a few shots of your, your guns that I'm going to kind of overlay over this if my editing skills were any kind of halfway good anymore. Uh, so, what was the outcome for you guys? We ended up pleading guilty to an amended charge of peace disturbance. Uh, $350 fine plus court costs, and we were giving our guns back. It was, it was basically a win 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 for us. You know, we made our stand as far as our Second Amendment rights. But the city got a guilty charge. They got a little money out of us. It was a smoke and mirrors tactic, I feel. You know, and something to shut us up and get us out of the way. Keep quite us frankly, I mean, the prosecuting attorney didn't even know, per se, at court what the hell we were there for. And he just didn't want to deal with it, so he offered us a plea bargain. And not having the extra thousands of dollars to keep it going, we had to take it, unfortunately. But and it's done, it's over way. with, and there's. There's going to be a fight another day, and when that day comes, we will take that stand. And a lot of people have stood up and took notice over our little little battle here. It's drawn a lot of attention. Uh, there's a lot of people asking questions, you know, wanting answers because of all the shootings in Cape. You know, maybe it's just a centralized area that we've, we've made a slight change in opinion, but that's going to carry over into other areas. People are going to leave here Ripple and go to other towns and other counties and say, well, you know, this happened in Cape and these people fought it, you know, and, and all this is going on. And that's going to stick in other people's minds. Right, right. Now, uh, your lawyer, uh, yeah, how instrumental was he in, in helping put your case together? Did you guys already basically have all the things formulated that you just needed someone to, to say it more succinctly? Actually, he <laughs> fine-tuned us and, and drawn us together. Between my wife, Sheila, and myself, we'd already picked apart, you know, knew what our laws were, knew what our rights were. We just weren't organized. Right. He did all the, the organizing, drawing us together into a single mindset. He did mindset. a lot of his own research independently. And he did, he did the paperwork filing for us. You know, he, he knows all the legal loopholes. He was instrumental. I mean, anybody could, could do on their own what we've been through so far. And I'm not trying to take nothing away from our lawyer because he was able to push and get more responses than get it done if, if in the a three of us had been filed on our own, you know, we'd have got the political red tape to run around because we're just average around. Joe Blow. Right, right. So I have to pardon my ignorance a little bit. Was this a legitimate criminal charge? Because if so, that would have should have theoretically given you a, a jury trial, or was this more of a civil offense? What how it's is this categorized? It's basically just a traffic ticket. We could have, we were going to pay a, a fine. It's a traffic ticket for illegal use of a firearm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Unlawful use of a weapon, readily capable. Readily Even though capable. we weren't chambered, my wife wasn't chambered. I was. Our magazines were, but that doesn't make it readily capable. You still have to cop that gun. But yeah, basically this was all <laughs> just a little citation. <laughs> I shouldn't be citation. laughing this hard, but a traffic ticket 
for a gun charge while you're out of a car, not moving, not doing anything with a freaking car, and it's a wow. I mean, it's how ass like backwards is that? Ticket. They give you, you let <laughs> yellow piece of paper and they say, come to court this day, pay the fine or plead innocent, and go from there, and that's what it was. You know, a lot of people have asked me why we we fought this because it's just a simple fine. It really doesn't go on your record. It's still a weapons charge. Yeah. It's still something we believe in. And the possibility of, they they might not have their CCWs, but I had the possibility of losing mine and I, there's no way that's going to happen. I'm going to no. keep it and I'm going to keep continue you to know, enforce my gun rights. My wife who's not with us, uh, she's getting her CCW. I won't. You know, I believe in open carry. I want you to see. A lot of people say, well, that takes away the surprise element should something happen. The public needs to see good guys have guns too. You know, it's a way to educate. Uh, a lot of people say, well, why do you open carry? Because I can. It's my right. Right. And, you know, as, as we saw back, you know, in the 17 and 1800s, the people that they trusted were the ones that... I'll wait for that guy. <laughs> Out of here. <laughs> Some of my buddies. Oh, nice. That's all real person's construction. <laughs> so, anyways, so, so back in the 1700s and 1800s, the people that they all trusted, and this was well documented, that it's the people who were open carrying that everybody knew and everybody loved and everybody trusted. You know, even if you hated each other, you trusted each other that you weren't going to blow each other's brains out. It was the guy who was sneaking around with a pistol in his ass or, you know, a knife a hidden in his boot. The gun's not going to fire itself. It's the person that's going to fire it. Correct. Absolutely. So you should trust You should trust the person whether they have a gun on them or not or not trust them because they have a gun or not. Not simply based on the fact that they have a gun. Right. I can because do just as much do damage harm. to you with a baseball bat as a gun. I can do just as much damage with a, a freaking pencil. I can kill you guys with this tripod that this camera's sitting on right now. I could take my cell phone and jam it down your throats and murder you guys. And guess what? We couldn't protect ourselves, could we? Nope. Because we don't have our guns. Yeah, except and, for in the car. Right, well, I mean, it'd be really, really easy. They would just haul me in there, over there, and uh, <laughs> you know, then I'm done for. But, you know, this is the thing. Peaceful interaction and cooperation amongst individuals. You know, we see everything that, oh, we need police and we need we need all these militarizations because, you know, if we didn't have it, there would be, you know, chaos and, and everybody would be at each other's throats. Uh, no? Yes, there's going to be scumbags, but in my experience, there's a quote out there that says, uh, anarchism is not a guarantee that there is going to be no crime. Government is a guarantee that some people will commit crimes. Exactly. It's, it's just one of those kind of fun little quotes. Uh, so... Let's kind of move on to some, some advice. If somebody else is in your shoes, and I hope nobody has to go through a similar situation, obviously, <laughs> but if they have to go through it, what advice would you give them? Uh, how should they proceed with things? And especially if they're in the area, who should they go to? You know, I would say research. Uh, if you're planning on traveling, know your state laws, particular towns, uh, check in your city ordinances. If you can't find anything online, Call the sheriff's department, call the police department. You know, I say this, and it's really gonna come back to bite me in the ass, but ignorance is no excuse. I'm not saying we used it as an excuse, but being at the gun show and there was nothing posted there, or you would figure that they would have some kind of posting. Educate yourself. Be aware and don't ever think it won't happen to you. Right, hindsight's a magnificent 2020 bastard like that. Honestly, my advice is know your rights and try to stick to them as much as possible without putting in trouble. All right, now, you guys <laughs> Abide by the laws, don't do anything illegal, but stick to your... Stick to your <laughs> guns. guns. Stick to your guns. <laughs> Absolutely. And stand up for what you think is right. Whether you want to do that certain thing or not, what about everybody else? Because it's not just gun owners, it's... Everyone has a right to any kind of life choice. And if they choose to do something bad, well, then that's what the good people are there for. Right. Now, you guys mentioned that there's a fundraiser or uh, some kind of event going on for you guys. Yes. Uh, uh, can you tell us a little bit more about that? Now, I'll touch base with you guys on Facebook a little bit later on today. And, uh, you know, we'll, I'll put this all in the description bar at the bottom of the video here uh, so we can get some support. Uh, where can they go? What kind of internet presence do you guys have so we this, can help you guys out? It's called Gun Rights Across America and they got a Facebook page. Well, they're having an open carry picnic and barbecue and it's in Sullivan Fairgrounds. And basically we're gonna have state representatives there. We're gonna have lots of, you know, pro-gun people there to 
to help fundraise with some of the costs that we've incurred and to help spread awareness, try to get some things maybe changed if we can, try to spread the awareness that you have that right to do that. And that way if someone cro comes across something like this, maybe they have the funds to fight it that we didn't. And uh, like I said, it's, it's August 9th, it's from 1 to 5, and like it's, it's going to be a big thing, so you might as well come here. Um, the sponsor of it is Kenny, Kenny Parks, is his name. So if you want to, feel free to add him on, in, on the internet, and he'll gladly share any kind of a advice that, that he has to offer. Now, if people want to reach out to you guys privately, do we just want to link your Facebook pages uh, in the description that, bar, or honestly, that uh, is there any kind of good way? Find me. Yeah, All right. Too. Good, good, good. Is there any parting words, any final thoughts that you have for, for my audience? Now, obviously my audience being completely anti-government in general, they agree with at least 99% of what you guys have been saying as far as gun rights and, and protecting yourself and stuff goes. Is there anything else you want to say to my audience? We're not going away. Yeah, we're not going anywhere. My gun is going to be my gun until I either get a new one that's better or I die. And Find my cold, dead hands. Yeah, well, just just fight the fight. You know, there's, there's a lot of pro-Second Amendment supporters out there. We've got to be organized. We cannot let one or two people fight the fight. We have to rally. We have to support each other. Uh, strength in numbers. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, so, I guess this will wrap up our show. Uh, this is Adam Broad of Liberty Socialist Republic. I'm signing out saying peace and love and liberty. Two. One.